All right, let's do this. This is the last section here. Reduce the single stat line of crit chance to 657 down from 833. All right. So that is right now 833 is about 3.8% crit chance. And so 657 is like exactly 3% crit chance. So depending on how many crit lines you have in your in your setup that could get you like a little bit of a nerf or a, a decent little chunk. I still think crit is the best line to have as a as a line set yeah abby's in my lap again she's being sweet um i still think three percent crit chance is going to be better than like a weapon damage line or a stamina line yeah i mean some race change tokens would be nice since they did shake things up quite a bit with this um i think uh i think that would probably be a, a nice move to at least like you know smooth things over a bit give us a sale on tokens <laughs> yeah. sarah crazy pants thank you for the follow I like your name. Crazy pants are fun. Uh, okay, reduce the perfected ability augmenting stat lines of crit chance to 526 down from 666. Okay. So, yeah, any perfected item that had a crit line on it. I think that's probably just the same exact percent reduction. I, I'm assuming. Let me see real quick. 78%, 78%, yeah, okay. So they're just reducing it by the same the same percentage. And then Berserking Warrior, and reduce the amount of weapon critical per stack to 241 from 305. So like 600 less crit overall-ish. 2410. So you get 2410 total crit. Mm. That's still like 11% crit crit chance. It's, I don't see anything being better than that. Dragon Guard Elite. <clears throat> when does the patch go live? I assume... Well, the PTS, nobody knows. I assume the actual patch, like live servers, will be on the 8th. The 8th of uh, March, excuse me. But we'll see. <clears throat> um, Berserking Warrior, reduce the amount of weapon critical. Okay, we just read that. Dragon Guard Elite, the set now stacks up 10 times. Once every 0.5 seconds, up from five times once every second. Reduce the critical per stack to 275. Oh, that's pretty good. That's actually more crit chance than Berserking Warrior. But you get a uh, recovery line on this. Uh, Stam recovery line. So overall, it's going to be... gonna be less damage slightly than berserking warrior but with a little higher recovery <clears throat> yeah it looks like dagger dagger dark eso off, off initial glances dragon guard elite has to be from uh from the front actually 
has to be uh, from the front or the sides, I believe is how it's worded. So you can't be behind for this set. <clears throat> That's not bad though. Twenty, I mean, twenty-seven fifty crit is is pretty dope, and you get some recovery. So just a slight DPS loss from Berserking Wear. It's not too shabby. All right, Eagle Eye. So these are the three-piece sets, or uh, two-piece sets. Sorry. Wait, are they? No, three-piece sets that have two-piece bonuses. That's what it is. So. Same nerfs all around here. Leviathan and Mother Sorrow down to 1528. <laughs> Medusa. 892 down from 900. What? <laughs> they lost. It lost eight. <laughs> oh my god. That is 0.03% crit chance that it lost. Honestly, uh, I already liked Medusa better in a lot of situations because I'm lazy and it, like, not having to keep up Minor Force was great for me. Um, yeah, Medusa's, I mean, Sorrow's still good. Leviathan's still good. All these, there's so much crit damage. Um, like, Mechanical and Cutie increased the, stat to, the cooldown to 21 seconds, up from 18. I mean, yeah, this is a nerf for if you're using it in, a, like, a normal fight. If you're using it on, like, trash or whatever, it's still amazing. And, and crit chance is just so good. These sets are still going to be really good. Like, I, I wouldn't fret too much if anyone is, like, worrying about, like, these sets sucking now. They're they're not. They're still really good. Uh, Slime Craw reduced the One Piece bonus. So this one, okay, so this didn't get nerfed as much. One Piece Slime Craw. This is higher than the normal bonus due to the two-piece bonus being a minor buff, which you may already have access to. Okay. I mean, that's pretty nice. Like, most of the time I wear Slime Crawl, I'm only running a one-piece Slime Crawl anyway. It's not a two-piece. So, Slime Crawl is the one-piece king now for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, that's... It's weird though that they had changed that one piece because of the two piece. Uh, honestly, I think the way to do that would be to move the extra crit onto the two piece and leave the one piece the same as all the others if they're like really trying to really trying to balance that but then that probably would look kind of weird just like 120 crit extra on the two piece but yeah i guess i guess slime crawl is the go-to for your one piece if this is how it is that's too big break for some hey whatever i'm not gonna complain i'll i'll get all the crit chance that i can We expect the entire armor, entire armor set system to get a face up. Uh, I don't think so, Rabbit. I think I think at least for now, that's probably the extent of what we're gonna see. We might see some number tweaks in it, but I I don't see much changing. All right, let's uh, let's go on. Zogvin increase the weapon critical per stack to one seventy seven. So 1770 now instead of 1340 is what we get up to. Uh, so that's like 8% crit chance. It's pretty nice. The biggest thing with Zogvin though, compared to like Medusa. So if you're using Medusa, it stops you from casting Barb Trap. Which steals physical damage and doesn't really do a lot of damage on a mag build. Um, or 
channel acceleration, which has a long cast time and can really disrupt your rotation and you deal no damage while you're casting it. Whereas for Zargvin, like Trap does good damage on Stan. So you don't really benefit from it the same way like a mag build benefits from freeing up that space. Um, it could still be nice, like for Bobo stuff, where you're, you might not be able to get in to put your trap down. Um, it's still probably pretty nice there. It's nice for werewolves, because uh, they don't get minor force in their kit. So, it definitely has its uses. It's just not as, like, overall good as Medusa is for Mag. <clears throat> Yeah, and Stam does have more flex spots too. That's a good point. So, like, fitting trap is not really ever an issue. Whereas on mag, man, that bar space can be really nice to have sometimes. Uh, let's read the developer's note. Previously, crit chance was sourced very abundantly and was the clear winner in terms of a chaseable stat for in game damage dealing in PvE while having natural counters and operational costs in PvP. The main source of this issue was the fact that the standard rating of critical chance granted was too high, meaning item sets and passives that granted it were out of line when compared to other stats like weapon damage, spell damage, or penetration. With these adjustments, we expect many builds to have reduced critical chance rating while also helping tone down the effectiveness of crit damage and healing unless your build goes out of its way to specifically chase those stats now. Yeah, we'll have to look at, like, overall, like, what kind of crit chance we end up sitting at. Uh, but, yeah, we're definitely going to feel it. And I completely agree with Short Bus. Necros were already, like, right there at the top of the pack. Even, even outside of using their their colossus like they're still like right there at the top of the pack for damage and their crit chance passive got no adjustments dk will have negative crit now. <laughs> oh that's so true their, their crit was already so bad oh god poor poor dk's gives crit to enemy yeah, it's uh Necros are gonna be nasty strong compared to other classes. I don't I mean I, I don't wanna too much overreact based on week one. And I hate calling for nerfs, but if they are gonna come after all of this crit chance stuff and then just completely ignore Necros crit chance and execute which gets up to 100% in most builds like it doesn't really make sense they they yeah hmm yeah they they i think they need to rethink that one i'm sorry for you necro guys I, I, like i know you don't want me to call for a nerf but and the overall interest of the health of the game, it just, I hate seeing Necro stacks. It sucks. Hey, hey. Sora TV, thank you for the eight months. <clears throat> really appreciate the support. Uh, let me saw two mythics. Yeah, just give DKs a passive. Just get rid of their. Uh, I don't know. They have a bunch of stupid passives that don't even matter. <laughs> just get rid of one of those and put. This passive allows you to wear two mythic items at once. That would be pretty dope. G 
should try Malakath. <laughs> as crappy as Malakath is in PvE, because of how high crit damage is, <clears throat> I guess DK probably would like be able to build around it the best. You just, you know, you wouldn't use the shadow. You'd use probably the spell damage Mundus, I guess. Um, just like change your setup around to build around it. It's it would still be worse, but like. If any class would do it, I guess it would be DK. Engulfing with the new monster set. What, uh, what buff did that new monster set give again? I forgot. It was pretty juicy, wasn't it? 5% crit, or 5% flame damage, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. This monster set's really nice. Um, now I gotta find where we were. Here, okay. I think we're almost done. <laughs> Your dual ma sort mag DK. Hey, that. <laughs> it kind of works. Kind of works. They're buffing Zogvin. Uh, they buffed Zogvin and they buffed Dragon Guard Elite as well. I think because those didn't stack as high as Berserking Warrior did. But yeah, I, I I'm not sure. Maybe maybe they considered those calculations to already be like way too low. In an effort against the to combat against the effectiveness of pre-buff sets, or sets that retain their effect after activating and equipping them, we've made the following adjustments. These sets now require you to be in combat for their five-piece bonuses to activate. All Halls of Fabrication unique sets, Armor Master, Meritorious Service, Moon Dancer, Shroud of the Lich, Spectre's Eye. Toot the look, Steve. Undone. Undone infiltrator. Were people pre buffing with this? Oh, I didn't even think about using that. <laughs> I didn't even think about Undone infiltrator and Weaver. Oh, Elf Bane does survive. Oh, Elf Bane survives. Elf Bane lives. Too bad Elfbane is actually like not even good on a Magsork because their Atra does so much damage. <laughs> Lich for every buff. And Yorvolds. Yorvolds. Interesting. New Moon. How are you going to pre buff New Moon? <laughs> that's a, that's some big brain strats if you figure out how to pre-buff new moon. Um, this is good though. I I participated in in some pre-buffing. Yeah, yeah. What Vambo's saying, it's it scales with your stats at the time of the damage tick. It's uh, it, it dynamically scales each tick. Well, I guess. I think most classes, Elf, Bane, Destro, is, is still the way to go for a pre buff. But yeah, like Mag Sorks, you get a little more upfront burst from it, but since the Storm Atro lasts so long, you end up like. Like, if you have both of them here, like, it starts this way, but then the Atro, like, ends up getting you ahead before it wears off, it seems like. Instead of giving console dresser and they get rid of free body. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd like to see both, honestly. Um, I, I don't personally mind pre-buffing to an extent. Um, I think 
I've talked about this a little bit before. I think the way pre-buffing is done is really, it's kind of shaky and obviously kind of game in the system a bit. Um, so it's, I would like to see, so th I think about it like this, like when I play other games outside of ESO, like say like Divinity, Original Sin 2 or just whatever, you go into a fight, your party's like getting ready to go into an encounter and a lot of times you do things as a group to like, uh, to buff up and like prepare for the encounter before it starts. So I wouldn't mind seeing some kind of system like that in Elder Scrolls, but the way that you have to kind of like cheese the system to do it now, I am not a fan of it's, you know, it's part of it is fun to me in a way because it's like people came up with these fun strats to do it but at the same time it's also kind of annoying to have to do it before every pull like once you start doing it and like console can't do it so that i mean that's a big thing too like they just they're unable to without the add-ons playing Pathfinder, spend two minutes buffing everyone when you hit a new map kind of annoying <laughs> Yeah, the fact that it requires an add-on is what makes it not ideal. Yeah, exactly. I think if there was an actual, like, more of, like, an in-game way of, like, prepping as a party or whatever, and I don't know. You know I'm, I'm fine with there never being anything like that, too. Um, but it's, it's just kind of a fun party thing to do. But I'm totally cool with them just getting rid of pre-buffs because... It's it's annoying. It's uh it's annoying to have to do to like squeeze out the extra damage. It's just obvious it's not intended to be done at the moment, so it's cheese. Yeah, it's not intended. Um definitely not, but at the same time they've never said it's like against terms of service or like it's uh it's wrong to do either. Like that, it'd be one thing if they're like, players stop doing this. This is not, we don't want you to do this. It's against terms of service or, or you know, something like that. But it, they've never indicated that. So even though it is like gamey and cheesy, it's still like something that they say is okay in the current patch. Um, but now, yeah, in this new update, they're saying, hey, it's not, but. You know, it's just, it's one of those things. Yeah, it, it is cheesy, but at the same time, if you can do it and it's okay to do it and you're allowed to do it, like, why not take advantage of it kind of deal? Um, but yeah, I, I like it overall. I think it's good. Uh, these buffs no longer. And, it, and there's some groups where, like, everyone is doing this. And th then it does end up making kind of a big difference to the fight times. Um, I know most groups, most people aren't doing it though. And so like you end up, it doesn't really change much, but um, yeah, it's, it's a good change though, I think. But I still would love to see console get some dressing room love because just being able to change gear setups with the press of a button is a great feature and I think should be accessible all around because I mean ideal setups for AOE pools versus boss pools are are vastly different especially on stam and so something like that to be able to do that and not lose just so much time like switching out each individual piece is you know, I think that would be a great quality of life thing. But Elfbane Destro looks like it's still a thing. I don't know. We'll see if I'm still playing Magsort next patch. If I am, I won't be doing an Elfbane Destro to start. But um, anything else pretty much is still a good route. If you do want to do any kind of pre-buff. And then 
as people were saying too, if you're not running Medusa, you could do a Yorvold's channel acceleration pre-buff as well. And uh, save yourself some time on having to cast Trap. Next patch notes can no longer cha change gear while in trials. Oh no, that would be awful. Imagine if you just had to put on a set of gear and wear it through the whole trial. You couldn't change anything. <laughs> and then somebody comes in with the wrong gear on and you have to reset the whole instance to get them in the right gear. Oh, that sounds bad. That sounds really bad. Hey, Crimson Flow, thanks for the follow. Oh, yeah, an off off tank? <laughs> like, yeah, people that change like roles? Yeah, that wouldn't work. We, they couldn't do something like that. Okay. Well, so no more. No more Stygian on my Nightblade before fights. No more Baylorg ultimates. No more uh, Moon Dancer, Master Architect. Those are kind of the main ones I was using. Specter's Eye. Oh, I'm on a uh, skill book. Spectre's Eye. When you cast a magic ability, you gain major evasion for 30 seconds. Oh. Were people... Pre people were pre-buffing? Uh, that's funny. I don't, I don't know if a lot of people were actually doing this, but... I guess you can't do it anymore. Get a little extra major evasion before the fight starts. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Stygian. Stygian's a medium set. So it's really weird. You have to leave invisibility or uh, sneak for it to activate. So, like on a Nightblade, before the start of the fight, you could just hit your cloak and then, like, pop a synergy or whatever to pull yourself out of stealth and it would activate automatically. Um, but yeah, this is a medium set with all spell damage stuff on it. The only thing I could see, like, if you. If you were, like, weaving in your cloak ability once every 15 seconds but even then like the bonuses aren't that good 369 is not enough to lose a gcd every 15 seconds i i ain't mad pre-buffing was eh, it it was all right I'm not too upset about it. So yeah, uh, Yorvold's Elfbane, Yorvold Shuffle. Yeah, I guess you could still do that. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, Yorvold's, Yorvold's and Elfbane. I guess th those are the really the only main two I could think of that they didn't touch. Seventh, oh, Seventh Legion. Yeah, that's right. I was doing 7th Legion for a few weeks on my Stamp Sork as a pre-buff before, before we swap back to Mag. I didn't bother with Cinches. I don't know. That one's just like such a short buff. I was like, this is not worth my hassle. But, <laughs> but 7th is a pretty long buff, so I was doing that one. Um, like Arcasis Ult Gen before pulls, not a fan. Uh, yeah, it's it's probably better overall for the health of the game. I did like Arcasis, so I 
Our cases in groups that weren't abusing our cases was like the perfect amount of our cases, if that makes sense. Like, because a lot of times in groups, you'd have like one or two people that would like whip it out before boss and hit hit a pot. And so you get like a little bit of ult moved around and it was kind of like a nice little like top off. So it would be nice if something like that was usable, but just had to like cool down per activation on a target or something. So like if somebody gives you Arcasis, you can't get it from another person for 30 seconds. Like it's the cooldown is on you. Uh, and that way you could kind of like use it to top off a little bit on old, but it's not something like super busted either where you're just getting like filled up on old. Like people, people were using our cases, dropping their Destro ults, or I'm sorry, they had their ults, they would drop their Destro ults, they'd use our cases, and then they'd drop another Destro ult, and then they would switch to their combat gear. <laughs> like, so you. You could drop two Destro ults before the pull even started. It was, it was just like... Yeah, it was ridiculous. Like... I'm, I'm glad that's done. Like, uh, that was nutty. Obviously, like, very abusive of the system. But having, like, a little bit of, like, patchy on the back ult before the pull started, like... That was... I like that. I thought it was a cool little feature, but now we can just port to our house and get old and port back. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. So, yeah. That's good. Adept Rider. We got a... We get some juicy Adept Rider info here. This set now permanently grants Major Gallop and Major Expedition when warm, rather than granting Major Evasion while mounted and creating a harmful area that damages and grants Major Evasion to you and group mates after dismounting. With this rework, we expect the set to remain niche in functionality, but far more beginner and crafter friendly by helping traverse the game world, especially when at lower levels when you cannot attain these buffs easily. Hey, that's not bad. I mean, I have wild hunt rings on every character, so I don't really need this. And I think with them changing Major Gallop, I should have that back on most all of my characters. But I guess if I don't, I can craft a, craft a set of this for him. This is nice. I, I like that they... I don't know. A lot of people were... A lot of people were not buying their whole switching the assault line stuff up. So that you get vigor early. Like a lot of people were saying like, hey, that... No. We know why you're doing that. You're, you're pushing... Uh, rapids down the line so it's harder to get people are more likely to buy speed buffs and all that stuff and that was kind of the tin hat tin foil hat theory and i don't know it made sense there might be a little bit to that but seeing stuff like this is kind of nice it's kind of like all right maybe that wasn't their intention maybe they're just a little slow to react to people complaining about stuff like that so it's good to see I'm, I'm glad to see stuff like this because like having all my characters that haven't done serial stuff that are crafting like be really slow all of a sudden because they lost an ability that they had already previously had that it, it just felt really bad so Glad to see, uh, yeah, glad to see him do that. Uh, let's see, Dungeon and Arena, Drozakar's Claw. This set now grants 129 weapon damage on its five piece. So you get a free 129, but decrease the weapon damage per bleed on enemies to 103. So... I 
If you have four or less bleeds, it's a buff. If you have five or more bleeds, it's a nerf. Trezor Cars is interesting. The stamina recovery line on it really kills it for me for its like niche usage. Like it, it could be pretty solid on Stam Warden. But where to get that bleed now? Since yeah, that I mean that did kill. Well, you get the hemorrhoids bleed now, which takes like replaces one of those. But yeah, you you did lose a bleed from your kit. Imagine being a brand new skill on a brand new player on a stand blade. How are you supposed to stay alive? No. Yeah, no, I get it that that vigor is something you need access to early. Um, it just it felt weird to like push rapids down so far though, and a lot of people were uh, a lot of people were questioning their real intentions behind it. I definitely think having vigor early is a good call, for sure. I think people just didn't want that at the expense of rapids. Which they are resolving with this update. So it's nice to see. Vigor is a support skill change my mind. Yeah, it, it, that's another thing I saw. A lot of people saying like they should adjust the trees, put Vigor in the support line. Because it is... Pretty much a support ability. I mean, it fits more in that line anyways. Uh, let's see. These changes were done to make up for the fact that axes no longer apply bleed. In the addition of the hemorrhaging status effect, these adjustments to set should be far less swingy in performance and shine when specialized on bleed builds with less variance on chance. Yeah, that's true, because... Uh, Hemorrhage should be up pretty pretty much all the time on a stand build, I would think. So it will be a little little bit more reliable than your standard axe bleeds were. Alright, Flame Blossom. Fixed an issue where the set did not properly scale with damage over time modifiers. Iron Blood. Fixed an issue where the set snare could stack with very specific snares. Strength of the Automaton. The set now clarifies. It also works with bleed damaging abilities since this is a new damage type. But the set was originally designed to keep the damage type in mind. Yeah, that's that's a nice clarification. This is actually one I've been asked about a lot. Like, does Automaton work with bleeds? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, but it says physical. And so, yeah, it's a little confusing. So it's, it's nice that they clarified that, cleaned it up a little bit. Give Stam D some bleed, then no Stam Whip. Yeah, Stam Whip's not coming, boys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not coming. Yeah, you're not, like Anu said, you won't need that Orc HP anymore. Seed Shield could go in Assault. Yeah, I agree with that. That would be an easy swap. And then you could have Rapids as the first thing you unlock on one and Vigor on the other. But whatever, they they solved the problem already. They, they, they fixed it, so it doesn't matter, you know? It's props. Props to them. Like, they, they, they figured out a good way around it. And it's it's even better quality of life way around it than having to like have rapids all the time. Like I won't need a add on to quick slot rapids on my bar and take it off anymore. You know, I just ride around and I have rapids automatically. So yeah, props to them for coming up with a good solution. Alkosh, the armor reduction portion of the set now scales off a hundred percent of your weapon damage up to a cap of 3,000. 
rather than basing it its value on damage done. Dang. That's a that was a big old Al Kosh nerve. <laughs> like uh but I kinda didn't like Al Kosh, even though it was like really strong and gave a ton of pin. Like I kinda didn't like it because it was just so variable and it was like so different and every like any group you went to it was going to be different like the the values that they were going to get and it's how do you like properly plan for that you, you you really can't it's i mean you can with your specific group if you're like all right this is our group this is what we're doing we're going to plan around this number that's that's fine but even then like there's just so many different factors in like how like how much damage that proc could hit for that could go up or down so yeah it was kind of weird it was kind of like the uh roaring opportunist when it scaled off of how much damage your heavy attack did uh that was kind of wonky too so i this is easy it's 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 a nerf but it's an easy 3k pin <laughs> yeah i'm still going pie <laughs> um we're almost done though <clears throat> almost done but yeah three three thousand all you gotta do is hit a synergy all you have to do is have three thousand weapon damage three thousand weapon damage is not very hard to get to so even, even for a tank i mean you're gonna have to sacrifice some stuff to get there on a tank but not a ton like it's it's definitely doable and you and you can build around it now much easier you just know it's three thousand you're like all right this is a three thousand value easy uh fixed an issue where this set was not properly labeled as a prop Okay, the previous adjustments of helping make this set shine more when utilized on stamina damage dealers missed the mark. <laughs> you think? Uh, it it did nothing to make DDs run it over tanks. So we're converting something with far less variance and total power. Note that the value is still relatively achievable in tank builds who wish to run it instead, but they may need to run some extra weapon damage where they more normally might not to reach it yeah it's pretty much what we said it tanks will have to sacrifice a bit of their you know their comfort to run it so it's good whereas putting it on a dd it's just going to be naturally at its 100 percent value um so it's, i mean that's I like that design much better. I like that design better for sure. It's still definitely like, they're not trying to be like, Hey, 6,000 weapon damage to get to the cap, you know, <laughs> something crazy. They're still saying like, Hey, we know people use this as a tank set, but just a little bit more incentive to push it over a little bit towards the DPS side um still we'll mostly see it on tanks though uh, yeah elkosh is not i mean in mag comps on live you don't necessarily need elkosh depending on what you're doing um we'll see i mean i have no idea what we're gonna see in the new champion points so it, like right now, I I think I run like 27 points in spell erosion if there's no Alkosh, which is, it's not that bad really. So I, we'll see if they even have erosion in the new CP. They might not. So we'll see where, where all this adds up to. It'll, it'll take us probably at least a few weeks to start figuring it all out but all right alessian's board the set now has a cap of 1320 health recovery 
Damn, so they they double nerfed this set. Or this build, I should say. They took down werewolves resistances and they took down they put a cap on this. That's good though. That stuff was ridiculous. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Alright, Ravager fixed multiple issues where this set could proc off abilities that did not attempt to reduce the target's resistances. Yeah, this one was like I think Hurricane was proccing this. Like there are some other weird ones too. Um not really a great PvE set either way, but uh, let's see. Monster Mask. Celine set no longer has a 15% chance is now guaranteed to proc on any non-proc melee damage. Ooh, but they increase the cooldown. Reduce the and reduce the damage. Well, it's no longer one of those things that like jabs or rapid strikes is like way better at proccing. It's now like equally good on any kind of melee damage setup. Uh, including like if you're using a range spam, well, because your light attack is still gonna proc it. Um, I wonder like what the overall levels, I, I, I think it's gonna be down it'll definitely be down on like rapid strikes and and jab builds but i think it could be about the same if not slightly better on on regular like one hit spammable builds but we'll we'll definitely take a look at it and see what it's looking like Uh, with these adjustments, we expect lower DPS on the high end for builds utilized. <laughs> I should just click these developer comments because half the time they're saying exactly what I'm saying. With these adjustments, we expect lower DPS on the high end for builds utilizing rapid hitting melee attacks such as jabs or rapid strikes while helping it perform better on lower end with builds that utilize singular hit spam walls. <laughs> That's almost word for word what I said. All right. I need to go work at Zoss, I guess. I think I'm like on the same page with them right now. <sighs> Trimmer scale. Fixed an issue where this set's physical resistance reduction was considered a snare in some cases. Um, but yeah, I'm done with the patch notes. So YouTube. Adios.